Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about excitation syndromes. Pre-excitation syndrome, the characteristic one is Wolf, Parkinson, White syndrome. It refers to the presence of congenital accessory pathway and episodes of tachyarrhythmias. This term is often used interchangeably with excitation syndrome, which is associated with a small risk of sudden cardiac death. ECG features of WPW in sinus rhythm is PR interval will be less than 120 milliseconds. Normally, what happens is from the atria, this is the sinus node you can see here. From the sinus node, the conduction goes from here to sinus node to uh, AV node and AV node, and then there is goes to ventricles. There is excitation. So there is a process by which from SA node there is goes into the AV node and then that. It takes a period, some period of time, which is denoted by PR interval here. Now, when there is a presence of accessory pathway, that means that from sinus node, the current goes directly into the accessory pathway and, uh, and this electrical depolarization is transferred to the ventricle directly. So there will be early, uh, early activation of ventricle. It means the QRS will occur a little early and that's why PR interval will be shortened. There will be PR interval will be shortened. That is less than 120 milliseconds or less than three small square. There will be delta wave, slurring slow rise of initial portion of the QRS. You can see here there will be delta wave. Delta wave is nothing but uh, because of this accessory pathway because since ventricle is getting depolarized little earlier, it gives a slightly earlier pattern called as delta wave. You can see here short PR interval and delta wave can be seen and wide QRS interval. And because uh, the depolarization is occurring uh, in a different direction, there will be secondary SCT changes which will be opposite to that of this uh, changes to uh, SCT, that is QRS. There will be secondary SCT depression. And there can be a pseudo infarction pattern in up 70% of patients. So, pre excitation refers to early activation of the ventricles due to impulses bypassing the AV node via an accessory pathway. So, then uh, WPW syndrome, the action pattern, accessory pathway is sometimes referred to as bundle of Kent or atrioventricular bypass tract. So, you can see here this is a classical delta wave here, normal AV transmission pre excitation. In action, accessory pathway can conduct impulses in TVS. In majority of patients, it conducts in both directions. In retrograde only is in the away from the ventricle 15% and anterograde only is very rare. Accessory pathway can be left-sided or right-sided. Left-sided accessory pathway produces a positive delta wave in all precordial leads with R by S more than 1 in V1. Sometimes referred to as type A WP pattern. And the right-sided AP where there is negative delta wave. So you can see here positive delta wave. And this is called as type A WPW pattern, and there can be right sided that is negative delta wave in V1 V2, which is called as type B WPW. So tachyarrhythmias in WPW can be two types. One can be atrial fibrillation or flutter, second can be atrial ventricular re-entry re -entry tachycardia. Next is Long Genong Levin syndrome. Uh, it is also a pre-excitation syndrome where accessory pathway is composed of James fibers. It was Kent fibers in WPW, where it is James fiber here. ECG features are same as that. PR interval will be shortened because of this accessory pathway, less than 120. But the QRS morphology is normal here. You can see in WPW, there is QRS morphology will be widened and there will be delta wave, but it is not seen in here. You can see here, uh, it's a short PR interval with the normal QRS, QRS morphology. This is long gone Levang syndrome. Thank you.